Antimatter. Does it even exist? It sounds like bad science fiction, but antimatter is actually very real. Theories suggest the Big Bang created equal parts matter and antimatter, so there should be quite a lot of it. We can even make it in a lab. But because matter and antimatter annihilate on contact with one another, it's difficult to study, so there are many questions concerning its basic fundamental behaviors. For instance, I have two pieces of matter. The laws of gravity say these should attract, meaning they'll move toward each other. In other words, if I take a ball of matter and I throw it at the ground, it'll fall in a downward arc toward the Earth. Now say I have a piece of matter and a piece of antimatter. What happens? Do they attract like regular matter? Or do they repel instead? We don't know for certain, but we hypothesize they'll repel. If our hypothesis is correct and matter and antimatter repel, if I now take a ball of antimatter and I throw it at the ground, it falls at an upward arc, away from the Earth. To answer this question, we will use a device known as an interferometer. As a particle wave enters the interferometer through one of the gaps, it begins to diffract, splitting off at different angles. If the particle is gravitationally attracted to the Earth, it will fall down as it moves through the interferometer. If the particle is gravitationally repelled by the Earth, it will fall up. The detector will receive an interference pattern, which will look something like this. Say this center point is a zero mark. If a particle falls toward the Earth, like matter does, the pattern will be shifted beneath the zero. If the particle falls away from the Earth, however, the pattern will shift up. We hypothesized that matter and antimatter repel, so if we are correct, our interference pattern will be shifted up. But what does the public think about antimatter? We asked several students and professors at the Illinois Institute of Technology two simple questions. One, what is antimatter? And two, if I have a ball of antimatter and I throw it, will it fall up or down? Let's hear what the public has to say. Um, when I think of antimatter, I think of the Da Vinci Code, so I think of lots of explosions and stuff like that. <laughs> antimatter? Well, I know there's like dark matter and stuff, right? You know, just like stuff that takes up space but doesn't really exist, so antimatter, my best guess, and it is a guess, would be just like nothing but something, right? So it's matter, but it's not. It's there, but we don't know what it is. I had a ball of antimatter, and I wish to throw it. What do you think it would do? Would it fall upwards or downwards? I think it would fall upwards. Up? Because it's the opposite of matter? I don't know. Uh, no idea, but I guess up. Nowhere. I don't think it would come anywhere. Go just, anywhere. Just stay there. Maybe like suck you up or something, I don't know. I think it would go up. It would go up. Because matter goes down, it goes like uh, matter attracts, and so antimatter would be the opposite, it would repulse. Well, if it falls up, then our whole picture of the universe is wrong. So there are, if you, if you look at papers on the subject, uh, there's one set of papers that says maybe antimatter will be repelled by matter, in which case it will fall up. And, uh, but there's another set of papers that says it's possible that antimatter will fall down, but faster than matter. So, this is an area where theory is not a very good guide, where we really need to do an experiment to find out. The questions answered by our interferometer could have a deep impact on our understanding of the universe. The study of antimatter is therefore not only interesting, but important. Thanks for watching.